For the purpose of this film, we will assume that the atomic bomb used is a nominal bomb and that it is detonated at a height of 1,000 feet. We know that one of the three effects of an atomic bomb burst is that of nuclear radiation and that this effect is itself divided into two stages, immediate radiation and residual radiation. It must be emphasized that nuclear radiation will not be a source of danger to the civil defense worker, provided that he is protected from the immediate radiation and does not exceed the specified safe dose of residual radiation. The rays emitted by the bomb at the moment of the bomb's detonation come into the first immediate category. The most important of these are gamma rays and neutrons. The lethal range of the neutrons is smaller than that of the gamma rays, so the latter must be our main consideration. The effects due to the activity induced by neutrons in various materials will be examined with the other effects due to deposited fission products when we deal with residual radiation. All forms of radiation can be measured in terms of wavelength. Gamma rays have a very short wavelength. Related to other and more easily identified forms of radiation, gamma rays have a wavelength even shorter than X-rays, which, as you know, have the power to penetrate a human body and affect a photographic plate exposed on the far side. At a longer wavelength are the ultraviolet rays produced by the sun. Longer again is that of visible light. Then infrared rays. And considerably longer, the radar and radio wavelengths, and so on. It will be seen then that the gamma ray wavelengths are among the shortest wavelengths known to man. Short wavelengths also mean high energy, and therefore a high power of penetration. Gamma rays cause damage to human tissues, and can be lethal if the dose is large enough, as indeed can X-rays, unless properly controlled by a doctor to specified safe doses. Gamma rays are, in fact, used medically for destroying tumors and other internal growths. But, of course, they are then controlled to a very fine degree to ensure safety. When an atomic bomb is detonated, gamma rays are emitted in all directions at a very high speed and may travel up to a mile and a half from the burst. Except in the case of very massive doses, there is no immediate physical reaction to these rays entering the body. It may be some days before radiation sickness is experienced. With a lethal dose of gamma rays, death will usually occur at any time up to six or eight weeks later. The gamma ray dose received by a human being when an atomic bomb is detonated is governed by two factors. First, the distance from the explosion, and secondly, the amount of protection available. As the rays stream out from the source, they are spread over an ever-widening sphere, so that their density falls off very rapidly. At a range of three-quarters of a mile, the density is so far reduced that the dose received should not be lethal, although it may cause serious illness. At distances greater than three-quarters of a mile from the explosion, the energy and penetrating power of the rays fall off rapidly, and by the time they reach the mile-and-a-half circle, they are virtually harmless. The second factor, that of protection, is of great importance. For protection from gamma rays, the denser the material, the less the thickness required. At one quarter of a mile from ground zero, protection from a lethal dose may be obtained from seven inches of steel. The same degree of protection can be obtained with two feet of concrete or three feet of well-packed earth. Air raid shelters of the last war type will afford definite protection depending on their distance from the explosion and with an additional covering of earth or concrete can be efficient to a substantial degree. Now we will examine the kind of radiation known as residual. As its name implies, it concerns the radioactive particles left on the ground after the explosion. Into an area some quarter of a mile radius from ground zero may fall a quantity of radioactive particles called fission products. These are the products resulting from an atomic explosion. They are radioactive and emit gamma rays. 
The rising cloud following the explosion is also filled with these particles. They may be carried by the wind and will be widely dispersed. Some may fall to earth anywhere downwind. This is called the fallout. The radioactivity of the fallout is likely to be relatively weak and therefore not a serious problem. The neutrons which were emitted from the bomb at the same time as the gamma rays also have the power to cause residual radiation. With this type of air burst bomb, a number of these neutrons will reach the ground in the vicinity of the explosion. In doing this, they may make other objects on the ground radioactive. That is, they cause those objects to radiate gamma and other rays. Except with air bursts of about 500 feet or below, the potentially dangerous gamma rays of residual radiation, whether caused by fission products at ground zero, or by neutrons, or in the fallout, are not likely to be present in sufficient quantities to be a serious hazard, unless exposure to them is prolonged. In the case you see here, there is believed to be some radiation due to a freak fallout, and a reconnaissance party is sent to investigate. Radioactive rays are measured in dose rates of units received per hour. These units are called Röntgens. It's known that a single dose of 500 Röntgens has a 50-50 chance of being lethal to human beings, and that a dose of 25 Röntgens has no observable effect. Although it's unlikely that civil defense personnel will absorb even this amount in the normal course of their duties, nevertheless, in special circumstances, they may be called upon to receive considerably greater doses since it's known that a dosage of 50 Röntgens can be absorbed without undue risk. In these cases, civil defense workers may, where circumstances permit, be withdrawn temporarily from radioactive areas. Although it might at first sight appear advisable for civil defense personnel to wear respirators so as to avoid inhaling radioactive particles, the real danger is from the residual gamma radiation. And provided this is restricted to 25 Röntgens, it has been found that there is no danger from inhaled particles. It is possible for the radioactive dust of fission products to contaminate exposed food and water and thereby lead to radioactive poisoning. However, food and water stored in undamaged airtight containers would be immune from the risk of contamination. It is important to realize that radioactivity in any of its forms cannot be destroyed. This makes decontamination a difficult problem. It does, however, decay rapidly with the passing of time. In the case of fission product contamination, at the end of the first 24 hours, the gamma ray activity is only one fiftieth of what it was after the first hour. Provided the civil defense worker is adequately protected from gamma rays at the time of the explosion, and that an accurate record is kept of the dosage he has received, radiation is the least dangerous of the atomic bomb's three effects.